as far as your experience in the service industry, what does that look like? Like, how long have you been doing it? 23 years. And what's your perception of it? Like, do you... Oh, I mean, I like it. I love it or I wouldn't be there. Like, you know, I've had opportunities to buy restaurants and stuff like that. And I, I should have really before I was this old, but I just like the people. I like... I just like the environment, I guess you could say. Because mm-hmm. I like to talk. I like to mingle. And, and that business, that's what you basically do. Especially with me, because I'm a bartender, manager, blah, blah, blah. But even when I was waiting tables, it was that's why I liked it. Because yeah. you got to know your people. Because I'm a personal person, you know. So No, yeah, absolutely. As far as your skills in the industry, like you saying that you enjoy talking to people, getting to know them, and that communication piece. Has that benefited you in the long run? or like? How oh, those- absolutely. Like, you mean, like, getting to know people? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, like, I have customers that are friends, and I have customers that have helped me out in time of need, and mm-hmm. if I wouldn't have met them, like, when COVID came, I had customers call me up, and because we, you know, we, the service industry hit, like, all of us hit. But, oh, yeah, for you sure. You know, but I had customers that I've met call me up, like, hey, do you want to come file papers for me, or, hey, do you want to uh, run me to the airport, or, and I mean, not just one or two, I mean, I had a bunch, you know, that yeah. knew that, you know, we were shutting down and stuff, and just I've had throughout the years people like when Austin had his wreck, people just helping and when you know, just different things. That yeah. mean, definitely. How do you how do you like get those relationships? How did how did it how do you know that like if some random couple comes in, family comes in, that they're gonna be someone that you develop that relationship with? Like how how do those things grow? I guess I don't I mean, that's a hard question, I guess. Because like, it seems like you have a bunch of them. I do, and I'm very blessed with that. Like, yeah. I guess uh, I just talk to them, and then they ask me questions, and we just get to know each other, you know. Like, if you're from, I'm like, oh, if you're from here, and if they say, oh, you know, um, where do you work? And, you know, what are you, what are you, you know, like last night I had somebody from Texas come in, and I knew they were out of town. And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, my God, when we come back, we're going to come see you. You're so nice and so personable. And, you know, I guess it's just getting to talk to him and like act, yeah. not acting because I actually really do care like about customers. Like I know that sounds silly to some people because mm-hmm. not everyone's like that. But I mean, you know, yeah. But like I actually, if I'm going to ask you how your day is and stuff, I want to know how like your you day genuinely. Was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people can tell that for me. Mm-hmm. You know, because you know you see some people and not saying everyone's fake because I don't. I have a lot of good service industry people that are kind of like me too Mm -hmm. but i also have some that are just wanting to you know they're wanting the job not that they don't care but they're not as personable you know so i think that's how i've built my clientele is actually sitting there talking to them and i can kind of multitask you know i can talk and still do my stuff and you know have a conversation and come back like you know I, i i have a customer that lets me borrow his beach condo and I didn't ask him. He's like, well... How does that... It, it, like, how does I, it get to that point, you know? I don't know. Like, no, just <laughs> seriously. Like, just last... Three weeks ago, we went to the Gulf Shores, and Stephen was going to take his friends, and we were just going to take two cars. Well, this customer overheard us, talk, me and Stephen talking, because he came up there. And I've went, I've only known them for probably a year. I just got to meet them at Lost Creek. Mm-hmm. And they came in the next day like, hey, we're just going to let you borrow a a Toyota Highlander. It just sits in the garage. It's Brad's driving my daughter's car because she can't pass her driver's test. She's just turned 16. Yeah. And I'm like, no. I said, I I was like, I'm not borrowing no one else's car. She said, yes. She said, oh, my God. She said, y'all be so much comfortable. The luggage rack. And I got to thinking, and she's like, I have good insurance. I said, well, I have good insurance on me, you know, driving, you know. Right. She's like, well, Steven can help you drive. I said, no, I won't do that. But I actually borrowed it. Mm-hmm. And I just met these people, uh, not, like, not even probably, maybe a year ago, but not longer than a year. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I even was telling them, I was like, how does that happen to me? Yeah, you know, like, like how does I don't that, know. that's what's so crazy is, like, how, I, it's. I don't know. And that, that just happened three weeks ago. And, you know, they come in Lost Creek about two times a week. And they'll come either with their two kids or without their two kids. And I just got to talking to them one day and asking them, you know, y'all need anything, this or that. And then they just came. And that just happened through them talking to you yeah. at the restaurant or yeah. hearing something that you're. Yeah, I, I have no, I, we didn't have no mutual friends. And they go to Bubba Brews a lot. And, uh, they're just really good people. She's a nurse and he's a pilot and mm-hmm. does work at a home. And I was just like, wow. And I mean, I did it just because it was nice not having to take two cars. Yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, it just, I don't know. How many people do you think you have like that? That uh, are, that are like, 
people that you consider regulars or that you've established I have a lot of regulars like I would I have a lot of regulars I would and I have a lot of people that just know me from Jason's and you know mm-hmm. what stopped me I mean when I go to town I know people like it's crazy like just from their uh, interactions yes. there yes yeah but I mean I say like different like couples and stuff I mean I say I have a good 30 that I could call right now, and if I needed something, they would help me. But even, I would say maybe even more than that. But, right. like, I know, like, I, at least 30 that I know that I can call if I need something. I wouldn't, though, because, I mean, I you know, I make great money, but, like, if I need something moved or if I needed a plumber, like, or something, they would come help me out. Mm-hmm. I mean. And what kind of, like, do you have their contact information, or what does that look like? Well, Facebook? I have a bunch of them in my phone, yeah. Yeah. Like, their numbers in my phone, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And I mean, I'm friends with a lot of them on Facebook too. Probably at least a hundred of my friends on Facebook are my customers, mm-hmm. and I probably have thirty contacts in my phone. Do you, um, so like whenever people come out, are they specifically asking for you, or how does they just, that look? Yeah, I mean, I have people that ask for me, or they just just want to sit in my section. You know, I want the bar of Dana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's crazy. I guess. What like do you have any unique stories as far as like something that's really like a, a moment where someone was super generous that you didn't anticipate or like kind of a surprise generosity moment like or really? Oh, I met Aaron Rodgers. Did you really? Yeah. How was that? I have to see my water. Oh God, it was wonderful. Which that wasn't with Lost Creeks. One of the owners of the Best Court Cafe or one of my regular customers. You're getting a call. You can take it. So yeah, so I met Aaron Rodgers. Because the Best Court Cafe people, I know them real well, but they really didn't know I really, like, I was, like, basically in love with Aaron Rodgers. Right. And, you know, I've waited on people before, like, at Jason's, I waited on Jerry Jones, Jerry, I mean, Jody Foster, the Razorbacks used to always come in there, you know. It's not like that was nothing new. Well, it just so happened, it was on a Monday, and I told him, I was like, yeah, if you ever need any extra help, I'll come help do a, like, catering or whatever, you know, and... So I knew for four months, and I couldn't tell nobody. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. And I th- think, like, as far as, like, something like that, that was my most... Like, unique experience Yeah, that because had. I have been, like, following him for 12 years. I mean, we go once a year to see him play, and it's like, I was in WO, and they were all worried, like, don't... It's like, I ain't worried that he... I'm not nervous about waiting on him. I was nervous he was going to be rude. Because, you know, some celebrity... Yeah, you never know. And I said, if he is, I said, I will not... I mean, I said, I probably will just take all my Green Bay stuff off. I'll have to get my new license plate. Because <laughs> yeah. he was, him and his fiance, Jalen Woolley, they were over the top nice. Like, was worried about if we were going to throw food away. We we just catered for him up in Jesseville because they were only down here for like five hours. And mm-hmm. it was just pretty neat because I was like, oh, my God. I Like, I have to take a picture, which we did get a picture because I was like, no one's going to believe that I met Aaron Rodgers. They're going to mm-hmm. be like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah, I can see because, you know. You just always assume any interaction with yes. people is kind of annoying for them. So, like, it's like, how how much do you talk about being a fan of them? How do you, you know? Yes. And, you know, just like when Austin had his wreck and when my husband passed away, I mean, I was over, like, even sometimes when I think about it, I get tears in my eyes. Not because of, like, his wreck or, but just, like, the people that just, I was like, where is this coming from? Like, mm-hmm. you know, they, like, my... Todd's funeral was paid for. I didn't even have to pay for it. Like, right. that's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's $8,000 that, you know, that my customers all pay for. They and should... I can't take credit for it. They they did it all. So, how did, like, how do they, how do they pursue that stuff, you know? They just wrote me checks and left them at the adjacent for me and right. would just give me money. And, I mean, it would be like, why are you doing this? And I had one guy named Gus, and he's from Little Rock, and he is... I've waited on him, and I, he hasn't been in Lost Creek, but a couple times, because they live over on Jason's side of town, but mm-hmm. they, their main thing's in Little Rock, and they've had grandbabies, so they're not down there as much, which, if you saw him, you would think he was just some regular guy. He wears red pants and a white t-shirt. Mm-hmm. He apparently, from what Brett told me, thought on Jason's, he's like, really, like, I think out of everything, when, I guess it's when my husband passed away, uh, I was up there getting something and Randy handed me this envelope and it was like a check for a thousand dollars I'm like what is this Mm -hmm. and I was like he and he's just such a nice guy you know and like just like little stuff like that it was 
like whoa like, yeah it was just nice like, yeah it's well, crazy no, to see. it was overwhelming like not because just because i was like you know i've been blessed because i think like i don't ever take that for granted like even today like you know even when this covid came i got to go do to go orders you know but we are working like for free basically because mm-hmm. you know they couldn't afford to pay us we weren't you know open but i volunteered my time just because of our regulars and they kept us in you know business and stuff but it's very like i'm i'm very blessed i don't ever can't like just carolyn call me that to me they got some nice furniture to give away do you want some furniture and i'm mm-hmm. like you know yeah i'll take some i need to get rid of that old but you know just little stuff like yeah. that and it's just like i just just they were I, they were at jason's one day and i saw they needed some water and i went and got them some water and that's how we became i wasn't right. even their waitress they're like you just stop what you're doing i was like well i saw your wall it's kind of like my job like you know but i think with older people and like especially this generation today and not saying nothing bad about the kids these days but they don't get it mm-hmm. they don't get that it don't matter how young you are how pretty you are you have to give good service or you're just not that that's why you're not making the money mm-hmm. i mean that's just my personal opinion i mean like where i work we have a good staff it like all of our staff they have people ask for them too and we're a good team up there and that matters where you work too yeah absolutely i mean yeah, what, I guess what do you think the biggest thing that people are missing out on as far as like either new servers or people that are just of a gener- different generation? Is it the well, lack I, of connection that some yes, people pursue? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because uh, we even have some young people up there that, you know, because we're, we're hiring because, I mean, it, we're just been overwhelmed busy. Mm-hmm. And our owner, half his family works there. And, you know, one's going to call. You're like, we, we need help. But, uh I always tell them that I was like, you know, if you're shy, you don't, you might as well just go on out of the restaurant business because mm-hmm. you're not going to make no money. Right. I mean, you have to be personable with the people, and you know, like when Austin was going to bake tables, I gave him a day, and he's lasted two years, I guess. Mm-hmm. Be- and he's personable, but I was just like, you can't get mad, you know, because there's just like at any job, there's sometimes where you just want to be like, are you kidding me? But you can't show that, mm-hmm. you know, no matter if they, you get aggravated. And I'm not saying I never have because I'd be sitting here lying. I'd be oh, like, yeah. my, my eye rolls show, show it all sometimes. <laughs> but, no, it's just you have to have that connection with them because that's what people want. People want, like, I feel like when I go out to dinner, which I don't get to a lot because I only am off on Mondays. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I try to make conversation with the waitress. If she don't me, I do her, yeah. you know, or him. Mm-hmm. But I think that's what most people want, especially the older people, you know. Mm-hmm. They want that they're coming out of here they want to talk to you you know and they'll, yeah. then i know I, like as far as me seeing because i'm a people person like watcher like even when the girls that my waitresses that work for me i watch and see if they interact with them and i'm blessed we're blessed because they all do mm-hmm. they're like oh you know you know and, and that's what they want you don't ever see anybody like oh my and not saying a waitress can't be over the top Mm-hmm. But you hardly ever see anybody going, oh, God, she's getting on my nerves. Right. You know? Yeah, totally And the younger, the younger people just don't get that. They they just are like, oh, I'm just here for a check. And if you're just here for a check, it's like you might as well go do something else. Yeah. Like at any job, though. Mm-hmm. Not just the service industry, but. Well, it's going to be harder to make what the potential in the industry is just because you're not really making a lot of your money on your hourly wage. It's it's through that. Yeah, the customers, and you're you know? you're like a hairdresser. You're working for tips. You're working for yourself. Yeah, and even though the hairdressers, you know, they do your hair and stuff, but that's how when Jason shut down the first time, I was like, oh my god, I don't want to go nowhere else because I was there for 20 years. It was home. I was a teenager basically mm-hmm. when I started, you know, and then I was a mom of three when the door shut. It's like, whoa, what a transition! And you know, it's like one of my customers were telling me. And when everybody knows you in this town, they're going to hire you. I was like, yeah, I know that. But I was like, you know, I don't want them. I just, I don't know where I want to go. Mm-hmm. I don't want to work for corporate. Are I you liking don't. Lost Creek? Oh, I love it. I love like, it too. Like yeah. for me personally, it's like one of my favorite places yeah. to eat. No, it, we have, when I said like Brian, the owner, he is so like, he, he used to own Rocky Mountain Grill before it burnt down, not when mm-hmm. it burnt down, but he was helping for us, the other guy and he cares so much about it the food quality the service it's like, so good yeah and that we've been so, like i didn't get home last night till eleven thirty, and we shut down at nine mm-hmm. that's because we you know we don't rush people out of there either that you know we let right. them eat you know yeah we're not gonna let someone in at nine twenty if all the stuff's off because you just can't do that yeah. you know but we've been so busy like and i yeah i, I love it more than jason's yeah well and, when i went on there on friday it was packed mm-hmm. you know it's crazy we have people that We'll wait an hour to an hour and a half, two hours. But what we do is a call ahead seating. <coughs> so instead of you having to sit up there, especially, you know, 
now with the COVID going on, mm-hmm. we'll call you when your table's ready and we'll save it for you. You know, even if you're 30 minutes away, if we have that table, we're going to be like, okay, F- Miss Esther, we have your table ready. Yeah, and no. And then we save it for you and you're not up there with all the people around, you know, because I wouldn't want to be there. Even it's claustrophobic to me, but mm-hmm. yeah, we've been blessed. Yeah, well, like even, you know, in this town, the chains are pretty, like, carry a lot of the attention you know so like yeah. having a place like that that's local is that and it's so good too, yeah. yeah it's really really good we were talking that that building has never done the numbers that I we totally do i totally agree and it it amazes me like because i was there when it was kj's towards the end and then i was there when it was froggies all mm-hmm. and then now wall street we i i if i would have lost a bet if someone would said, would you think you would have done these numbers in this bill? And I'd be like, no way. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're doing great numbers right now, and that's wonderful, but you also have to keep that staff right and the kitchen right. Mm-hmm. If your food changes, people aren't going to come, even though, you know, I have people like, oh, people will still come for you. I said, they might come one day a week for me, but they're not going to come two or three if they don't have good food. Yeah, totally Bottom line, agree. they're just not going to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've quit going through to a couple places here, not going to mention the name, just because every time I went, the food sucked. Mm-hmm. And one of the girls and one of my great friends that you know when i say from service industry friends that i just go to see her to have beer so i'll go there and have a beer with her but i'm not gonna eat i was like i'm not gonna pay 25 dollars for a meal and an appetizer or, or like if i take the kids a hundred dollars and the food's horrible and it's inconsistent yeah and yeah. it's just and i know part of it though and that's a lot of people can't keep health and that's why a lot of these people are shutting down on mondays or shutting down two days mm-hmm. a week and this and that i mean it just you can't cook if you don't have people there either so you kind of you know when you go have a beer with one of your service industry friends what do y'all do y'all talk about like kind of what's going what do y'all chat about <laughs> just, <everybody laughs> just like good customers bad customers yeah all the time yeah it's fun though because you know you get you get out and you just talk about it you know and then it, then me being on this side and me seeing like maybe if a table was rude or if a table didn't tip you know you just have that connection and it's not talking bad about the people it's just funny because you're like you know because some people times you think people that will tip won't tip and then people that you think don't tip will tip great you know mm-hmm. and you know like one time we when i was there it was me and my couple of my friends and she was behind the bar and there's this guy and this lady just giving a really hard time and just wanting more like she'd go there was like do y'all need anything else no so i mean yes so Bring the ranch. Okay, well, I need some more water. I didn't, you know, it's just, it was just funny because we're all sitting there laughing because we can see it, you know. Mm-hmm. And we're trying not to let them know that we know, you know, what's going on. Well, they tipped her really good. And she's like, I can't believe it. I was like, yeah, that's worth, that's worth all that running on five time in you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's, most service industry people do that. Do you think that you have, like, what's the, um, do you think you typically have better tables? Or, like, what's the percentage of really great tables, average tables, to really bad tables that'll just either stiff you or just be way below expectation? Like, how does that fluctuate as for you? As far as that Wall's Creek... Oh, yeah, you're good. Sorry. But, like, as far as uh, Lost Creek, mm-hmm. I don't think none of the girls can complain. Like, you will get a crappy tip every now and then. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't sit there and I'm like, I, I mean, I get some tips that I'm like, are you kidding me? But... Most of the time, they're not. Mm-hmm. Like, you it's know, and I, good, for good. me, I, I'm blessed. Like, I'm over the top. Like, and I'm, I'm over the top. And even sometimes yeah. when I feel like I haven't given the service I need to, if I'm getting really busy, like, have to make everybody's drinks, and then, like, especially on, like, Friday and Saturday nights when people come to the bar wanting a drink mm-hmm. that's sitting out there, I have my people around the bar, the server's drinks coming in, and I have these drinks coming in. So, you know, I'm like, I'll be right with you. Just give me five seconds. Because, you know, they'll sit there and be like, yeah, like I'll be right long. there, you know, and I try to be nice if they also know, like, look, leave me alone. But I mm-hmm. think that's why people like me, because I'm just blunt. I'm not going to be fake to you at all. Like, yeah. I always tell you, you're just going to have to hold on. <clears throat> like, you know, sorry. Like, and maybe that's partly because I feel like I am the manager, you know, and I feel like I'm doing what, like, Brian would do, you know. You mm-hmm. can't, because you have just a routine but I'm over blessed. And I think most of the girls that I work with, they are. Like, you walk out of there. When you work, like, during a weekend, and you work from 5 to 10, and you walk out of there with a couple hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and most of them walk out with more. Or, like, on a Tuesday, when you're working 5 to 9, and you walk out of there with $175 or 200 that's right. that's great. Yeah, no doubt.